All right, guys, I got a new plane on the way home over the mountains. The engine quit. Ugh. And <laughs> a quick tease on dropping Scrappy. Let's get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, this video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm sorry, there's been no videos for three weeks. I have a great friend, Chris, does the editing of the videos and he's been traveling. He took a Cirrus overseas and uh, he's just getting back, settled in with his family. And so we're behind on videos, but I wanna talk about safety. So I mentioned that the engine quit. It's my second time I have an engine go out in a Wilga. Last time, catastrophic. I'll add that to the end of this video if you want to watch it. When the uh, rod came out of the aircraft. This one, unfortunately, wasn't as bad. But, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> so I've got a new Wilga. This is two here. we got a white one and a green one. I'm not exactly sure why I've got two right now. But maybe one sparks. Maybe two planes. I don't know, we got Draco X to do, but uh, I've now got two Wilgos I don't need anymore. But let me tell you a little bit about this trip. So this video is not so much about build, although I am gonna show you a little teaser about dropping Scrappy before I put the motor on the front. And I'm gonna do a real video on that, going through all the details later. But I wanna talk about safety. So we picked up a new plane and over the years, I've been flying 20 years, roughly 10,500 hours in helicopters and everything else. I've had numerous engine failures, and so I kind of wanted to address that. I lost an engine on a P210. Uh, the oil line exploded and blew all the oil, oil over the front of the window, so that was interesting. Emergency to a runway, asked everyone to leave because I couldn't see out the front at all. I've lost an engine in a 421 with an engine that had 200 hours on a Gitzo motor. Gear assembly came apart, went through, chewed up the whole motor, blew it up. That was uh, 25,000 feet on the way to Las Vegas with seven people on board. Lost the engine in my Wilga. Uh, airplanes are safe. If you have an opportunity, put a parachute in it. These stories are why I did it on on uh, Scrappy, and I wanna do it on more aircraft, but they're safe, but they're still man-made, they're still mechanical components, things still go wrong, so that's why I wanna emphasize being safe. Maybe reduce flight at night if you can, or eliminate it entirely. Really think about those flights over the big high mountains and where your outs are gonna be and what roads options you have. Kinda of refocus on safety and how you can fly differently or slightly inconvenienced to add two, three, four hundred percent more options when things go wrong. There's risks when picking up a new plane, flying a plane you haven't flown. This one quit on us. So the owner had been flying it regularly. You would expect there wouldn't be issues with a sitting engine or rust on the piston rings causing a ledge that wears out your compression. This one, really simple. We're flying back. We're over mountainous terrain. Um, we got good altitude, good weather. And uh, a friend of mine is in the co-pilot seat making minor, minor adjustments to the mixture. So you expect if you're coming back real slow, you might get, feel it start to get a little bit lower RPM and you turn it back in, watch your EGTs, get it where you want it. Well, tiny adjustments, I'm talking spinning the dial, minute change and all of a sudden engine went out and you think well that's no big deal push the mixture back in it's going to fire right back up and it didn't and i just say hey put it in more put it in more and he and mark no panic God, okay it's happening everybody stay calm what's, what's the procedure, procedure everyone calm? what's the procedure stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody calm down. it was just the strangest thing so of course at that point, push it all the way in. Let's see what happens. Push the mixture all the way in. And it took a little while. It came alive, but it wasn't making full power and the EGTs weren't in line with where they should be. So what happened? We didn't know. We went right to an airport, landed, decaled the airplane. The mixture cable assembly broke off the airplane. It would have broken off somewhere along this flight. It wasn't making a fine-tuned adjustment. It just happened to be that little tiny adjustment 
gave just enough pressure to take a hairline crack, fatigue crack from bending movement, continuing vibration, finally let go and disconnected the mixture cable completely from the bucket, which meant that pushing the mixture in and out was moving the mixture arm very little to none. What's something I want everyone to think about is these kinds of things shouldn't happen, but they do. So when you're doing all your training and you're thinking to yourself, Vengeance probably never gonna quit, but I'm gonna learn how to do it. Get that thought out of your head. Over the years I've learned and watched through friends of mine, personal experience, it's mechanical components. They fail, things screw up. Mechanics make mistakes, engineers make mistakes, we make mistakes. Fly your planes counting on it going out. So this turned into no big deal. We landed safely, we repaired it, but I wanted to bring it up because the area that it broke, all of you Wilga owners out there that fly a Wilga 2000, a newer series, has this assembly. And I'll have this picture you can see here. They're all gonna break eventually. So um, I'm gonna put in a call to the FAA, let them know what happened. What happens is the engine runs, it's flexing that bracket on the back of the mixture. So where mine broke was not a mechanic doing something wrong. It was not a repair done wrong. It's a certified aircraft, certified components with a design flaw. It needs to be reinforced. So there's 24 of you out there flying Wilga 2000s. Um, take a look, close look at this picture and take appropriate steps. Anyway, guys, it's a beautiful flight. <laughs> The mountains were amazing. The train was awesome. New York was great. I ran into a, a friend in aviation every time we stopped. Um, all of you that come up and say hi. Of course, the Wilga got a lot of attention and brought a lot of people over. So I'm super excited to be here. Be safe, be careful. Fly your planes like something will go wrong at any moment and take it seriously. It's happened to me a few times. I've been fortunate enough to get them down. This one was fortunate enough to get it started, but most of the time I've had to dead stick into dirt, fields, runways, um, the middle of nowhere roads, I've done it all. Plan on it happening to you and you'll be safer. Uh, I'm gonna get back to work and we'll show you a little bit about Scrappy. Be safe, have fun, your family wants you home. Okay guys, quick update on the part that broke that caused the engine to quit during a mixture change on this Wilga. Um, I went back to my older Wilga that was Draco, it was the last Wilga ever made, and I grabbed the bracket to check it out compared to the bracket that broke in flight. And the difference is, somewhere along the line, or they just missed it on this Wilga, they added a doubler plate, and you can see it just on the back. There's an, a much thicker plate of aluminum, and if you're looking at the front side, you can notice a few extra rivets here. This aircraft only had three right here. All the holes drilled in extreme close proximity to each other with not much material around it on a really thin aluminum. So somewhere along the lines, it got fixed or this got mixed, uh, missed. <laughs> I don't want you guys to get too panicked about <laughs> all these engine failures I've had. I've had a few. Almost all my flying is in really unique aircraft, different kinds of builds, certified, not certified. I've had problems in both. The reality is they all got down safe without damage, except for when I didn't do good on takeoff. <laughs> we'll leave that out. But the ones I've had engine failures, we got them all down okay, and so can you. So I just, I'm a little bit worried that telling you about these engine failures will scare some of you out of av aviation. I don't want it to. Try not to talk yourself into it will never happen to you when it likely will never happen to you. Kind of get your mind back on track that when you were doing your early flight training and you're practicing engine outs. There's a reason we do it, and it's just in case. And then if it all goes bad and you happen to be one of them that have an engine failure, like several you've met or myself, it can be fine. But just be aware of it, be safe, that's my point. Don't be afraid of flying, just be aware of the risks and uh, accept them and then be prepared for them. So I called the FAA, uh, I'm sending them pictures of this one and the other, I explained what's going on just to help make sure we're going through the process to let everyone know that has one to check it. Let's all fly safe, be careful, let's get back to work. All right guys, this isn't the drop test video, 
I'm not building anything in this video, but just for fun, while we're waiting for Chris to get back and get some videos put together for us, uh, this is just, before we had a motor on it, we all took turns climbing in the airplane while someone pulled the latch to drop it from about 30 inches. And that's actually above FAA certification heights, but no motor, didn't sandbag extra weight for the wings, didn't add weight for the fuel. It was just, what happens if we get in it for fun and we all take a turn riding it down 30 inches? So this is just a sneak peek of what's coming really soon. We're gonna do an in-depth drop test video soon with a motor on the front. See you soon. What do you think, Dex? Take him higher. There you go, all the way. That's awesome. <laughs> What'd you think of the, the landing? It was pretty soft. <laughs> <laughs> the, the initial drop was worse than the landing. And drop, three, two, one. What do you think? How did it feel? Oh, it's so soft. Right? Yeah, when it goes, when it lets loose, it's like... Violent. <laughs> but how was the landing? Oh, it's so cushy. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that was silly. We'll do a longer video later. It was so fun. Hey, so right now I'm gonna throw on the video of when the engine quit on Draco before it was Draco, the piston engine stuck it in a farmer's field. Just, just, just to remind you, this stuff is real. Be safe, it can happen at any time. Uh, if you don't follow my videos, if this is your first time on, I hope you liked it. I like to build crazy aircraft. Like, subscribe, follow me along. I hope to see you soon. Check out this wild landing in a cornfield. We're glad to be here. I'll be safe. Let's get back to work. Some tense moments for a group of pilots near Spanish Fork today after one of them lost an engine out over Utah Lake. Thankfully, the pilot lived to tell the tale, and he spoke with our new specialist, Sean Moody, about getting that plane safely onto the ground. Sean, that's quite an exciting day for him. <laughs> Yeah, really, it's probably some excitement he'd have been glad to do without. This is one of those things that pilots always trained for, but hope they never have to use. Mike Patey told me it was that training and some discipline that kept him safe today. I've been building and racing planes for a long time. You never know what's behind a hangar door. It's a 720 cubic inch eight cylinder. At Spanish Fork Springville Airport, <laughs> Mike Patey <laughs> has quite a collection. It goes, family, aviation. And I love my family. But there's yeah, but one plane missing. Today was different. Mike started Saturday off with a little formation flying with his friends, Everything the Flying Cowboys. Nice so we had three big events of only airplanes today. I got through two of them. <laughs> Before he could get to his landing contest, though, something went wrong. They were over Utah Lake. Purring like a kitten to catastrophic in three, two, one, gone. I radio back and I said, guys, get eyes on me. I'm going in, I'm not gonna make the land. But just as Mike was about to hit that water, he got one final push. I, I gained a couple hundred feet and then it went violet again and then just died. Mike's friend shot video as he came down in a cornfield, his brother just off his wing. <laughs> Realizing you're safely on the ground after something like that is a heck of a feeling. Heavy landing, you can walk away from the good one. Mike may not have gotten to his competition, but he put on quite a show anyway. None of those guys have smoke in their plane and I still got my landing. So I, I consider I won. <laughs> a Mike's airplane, a Wilga is what it's called. It's still sitting out there in that muddy cornfield. He hopes to get it out of there by Monday. And he already has another engine that he planned on putting it in there. He'll just get started on that project a little sooner than he anticipated. Keith, back to you. And he's still laughing about it tonight. How about that? Good, good luck for him. Thank you, Sean.